there we go. So what I really wanted to show you is, if anyone here thinks Michigan has not enough solar resources, you should look at Germany. This is um, Germany and the United States in comparison to solar radiation. And you realize that Germany, well, actually almost all Germany is closer to Alaska than anything else in the United States in terms of their solar resources. And then you look at the numbers. We installed 1,500 megawatts of solar PV just in 2008 talking about last year only. <laughs> and then you look at the United States, which is, by the way, 23 times bigger than Germany in size, um, minus Alaska. And you guys installed 342 megawatts. Isn't that embarrassing? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, um, so this is really the slide I wanted to, to get into your head, and especially if you think, well, you know, California can do solar, and New Mexico can do solar, Texas can do solar, but Michigan, well, you know, we're in the north and we can't do it. That's wrong. Look at Germany. I mean, we did it, you know, and we are, well, closer than Alaska than you are, so that's just what I really wanted to see, you guys. Well, so, I mean, these are the numbers that Toby and uh, Paul have come up with, but we are close to 15% of renewable energy. Um, uh, consumption in, in our country and it's just I run through that because this is another slide I really want to, to show you and share with you because it shows that in fact um, jobs can be created from this policy. And what we've seen is so you can see now 2004, 2006, and 2007 and actually the latest figure for 2008 is 280,000 jobs created in the renewable energy sector. And if you guys think well jobs is what we want and this is what you're going to do, because otherwise other states will be doing it before you, and then you're going to be left in the dust. I mean, talking about Ontario, so according to the Toronto Star, NanoSolar is considering to build a regional assembly plant for its Synthium solar modules in Ontario because of their proposed feed in tariff. And there's another, um, actually, Canadian based company which is called Everbright Solar. They also plan to build another um, factory, manufacturing facility in Ontario. Um, yes, and then talking about Gainesville, Gainesville came up um, several times before. I mean, the European Photovoltaic Industry Association did send a delegation of executives of solar companies from Europe that look, they look to enter the market in the United States. They look for places to build their manufacturing plants. And of course, they want to see stable policies. So they did go to Florida to explore what's going on there and to see whether they want to enter the market and build plants there and bring jobs to, to the state of Florida. So I mean, if you think that Michigan needs jobs, you better do something about it quick. As I said, otherwise you're going to be left with dust. Um, OK, just some quick more numbers. Total um, economic impact, total turnover from renewable energy sources in Germany is approximately 25 billion euros. 2007. Uh, apart from, from all that, we also saved um, CO2 emissions in a quite significant way. It's about 150 million tons uh, through that policy, through renewable energy that we installed. Um, how did we achieve this? Well, as said over and over again, it's the main instrument of the Renewable Energy Act, which is essentially the feeder tariff system. It gives renewable energy priority access to the grid. It obliges grid rates to purchase electricity from renewable energy sources. And it sets the price for a fixed period of time. And most important, there are no limits to the amount of renewable energy fed into the grid. No caps whatsoever. Um, and so this is, you can see again, um, this is when the first um, Renewable Energy Act of Feed Attack was passed in 2000. And it was amended in 2004, and that's the growth we have monitored in Germany. So that. Um, also, Germany is well, the world leader in solar power, and 54% of solar power capacity worldwide is located in Germany. So, yeah, nice slide. <laughs> okay, um, also important to notice is that the majority of the market actually is residential. It's not a big, you know, it's only 10% market share having um, the utility scale facilities. Actually, most of it, more than 80% is residentials. It's the homeowner that puts the solar panels on its rooftop and gets paid for it and becomes part of the whole story. So this is really remarkable, I think. Um, yeah, concept, we've heard about it, the costs. 
Well, I want to point out in Germany, it's like for, so each ratepayer has seen an increase in 2.94 euros. So each household, in, it's like increase monthly electricity bill, but 2.94 euros is equivalent to a pint of beer or a Starbucks matter. So if you tell about, you know, this is like horribly expensive, we can't do it. Well, I mean, you can't go buy and get a cup of coffee at Starbucks to help make renewable energy real. I mean, come on, guys. This is just, I don't get it, but I hope you get it. <laughs> okay. Um, why, why is the tariffs have been so successful? Well, it's the, as Toby said, it's the investment security that is um, being brought by the 12 to 20 year contract length. Uh, this is crucial to investors, and it gives technology specific incentives, which is crucial for driving new technologies into the market, and that's what we need. We need growing markets. Adapt to technology de development, and that fosters innovation. So, solar is a growing market, and I hope it keeps growing. That's the end of my presentation. Thank you. Thank you. More information on our website, uh, onlinepack.org, and also the Alliance for Renewable Energy, uh, which has become very active in pushing the in the United States.